Hi everyone, I'm Michelle and I'm your commercial and nonprofit underwriter. So today I'm going to go over the Accord 140, so the property section, as well as the um, Accord 131 for the umbrella. Um, and just give me one second. That around. So I'm just going to show you guys, and then I'm going to do the same thing Teresa did. I'm going to go through and type through um, on the Accord. So just a real quick glance at what we're going over. All the highlighted sections on the Accord 140 is what we're going to go over today. Uh, so let me pull that up for you guys. Um, like Teresa, I'm going to follow her date. So I already typed in today's date and put in our agency information. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in the named insured. And again, we're going to put the policy dates in. And like Teresa said, the you know selecting the payment plan information doesn't matter. Um, it's not going to affect anything one way or the other. Um, and then the next information that I'm most concerned about is um, the building information, including the address on this page. So this is premises one, building one. So if they had multiple premises, you know we just list premise one, premise two, and then however buildings are each of those premises. And then again with the address. All right, so now um, for the subject of insurance. Um, there's always different ways people fill this out. So what we're looking for here is what type of property coverage you're looking for. Um, sometimes I'll see people will list the address here or list the, a description of what the building is. That's not what we're looking for here. Here we're looking for what type of coverage you're looking for. So since they own the building, they need building coverage. Um, so we're going to give them 150000 in building coverage. Uh, your co-insurance is important. Um, we will automatically default them if there isn't a co-insurance listed on there to 80%. Um, that is our requirement. Um, in this case, we're going to give them special form replacement costs. So that's our valuation here is replacement costs, and we want to give them special form. Not too concerned about inflation guard, um, and then a deductible. Um, generally speaking, if a deductible is not applied, um, you know, standard deductible is either going to be 1000 or 2500 depending on the carrier um, on what they pick. We're also, since they are a clothing store and they have merchandise, we're going to also give them business personal property, also known as BPP. Um, so we're going to give them that. And we're going to give them 50000 in BPP. And again, we're, you know, filling out this information as well. And then we're also going to give them business income. And some people will leave this blank or put ALS, which stands for, um, oh, I'm sorry, their total losses. So we're I'm going to actually give them a specific amount. So we need a specific amount for business income, um, regardless if the carrier will offer them ALS or not. Uh, we still need a number because we still have to put something in. So I'm going to give them 100000 in business income. And then if there's any other property coverages you're looking for, um, say, you know, they want equipment breakdown, you can just list them down here. Um, and, you know, that's something else we can include. So equipment breakdown is an example. Um, building ordinance is another example of um, other property coverages we can offer them. Um, we can include a property enhancement endorsement. So any property coverages that you're looking for, we would be looking for them to be included on the 140. Um, you know, some carriers automatically include certain coverages, you know, as part of their bells and whistles, and that's fine. Not all of them do. So if you list out, we will make sure we're including the coverages that you're looking for. So we're not having to, you know, continually requote the risk for you. Um, this additional information section, not really too concerned about it. Um, so like I said, we're really looking for this information at the top, your building information and your business income, and then any other coverages you're looking for. Now, as far as the building makeup goes, this is extremely important to us. So we need the construction type. Um, most buildings, I'm gonna say in California, are frame. Protection class is important to us. So I'm gonna put two. This building is one story, no basements. We're going to say it was built in 1980, like Teresa put on her first page, and that's something also, too, that we're comparing to, making sure the information, you know, that is listed on the 125 and 126 corresponds to what's listed on the 140. Obviously, we want it to be consistent, and then we're making the building is 1,000 square feet. So the building was built in 1980, so at this point, the building is 41 years old, um, which for most of our carriers means they don't qualify for special form anymore. So for them to be able to qualify for special form replacement costs, um, we are looking for building updates. So to the wiring, roofing, plumbing, and heating. So we're looking for this information. So a lot of times I will get just this. The X's are marked, but no years are provided. We need to know what year the building was updated. So in this case, I'm going to say the building was updated in 2010 for all components. It can be, you know, all over the place. You know, they only did one part at a time. That's totally fine. 
Um, but we do need that information in order to offer what, um, in order to offer you guys special form replacement costs. Without that, that information, we're only going to be able to offer you um, basic ACV. Also, this in information is important as well, even if we're only offering them business personal property. Say they are just the tenant of the building and they don't um, own anything else. They don't own the building themselves. We still need this information in order to quote with our market. Um, and then we also, honestly, all this information, nothing else really matters except for burglar alarm. So if they have a central station burglar alarm, please let us know. Um, that way we can offer them and include um, theft coverage for them. Um, so I'm just gonna say Bay Area alarm, we'll call it that. So we are looking for that. And if we have to inspect the risk, that is something that we'd be looking to have confirmed um, so we can ensure that we are you know, able to offer them theft coverage. Because if they don't have that central station alarm, uh, we can't offer theft, so theft will be excluded. Um, and yes, please mark if it is a central station alarm, that is extremely important to us. And then the next piece of information that we're concerned about um, is you know, whether or not the building is sprinklered or not. Um, that is very helpful. Some carriers offer a sprinkler credit. So depending on, you know, the building, let's just say this building is a, eh, been, based on the age, it probably isn't sprinklered, but this is an important area to put, you know, if it's partially sprinklered or to what percentage it's sprinklered, please include that information if you have it. And then last but not least, um, we are going to include a mortgagee in a Las Vegas on here. So we did ABC Bank at... And again, just include this information for us um, so we can make sure the appropriate additional inform insured forms are included on the policy. If you have a loan number, feel free to include that. I know we don't always get that information and sometimes you don't get that information as well. But if you have that, please include that on there and we'll make sure that's included on the certificate as well. Um, so that is the 140. Um, and again, if we scroll to the second page, it's just repeating the information all over again. Um, so if they had multiple buildings, you would just be putting in what coverages you're looking for that building um, and you know the same basic information. If they've had updates, what year it was built, the construction type, the square footage, so we'll just would be repeating that information. Um, so I'm gonna pop over to the Accord 131, um, which Michelle, is for- before you move yes. on, there's sure. a couple questions. Okay, um, not a problem. Do you need me to read them or can you see them? Uh, give me one second. Let me read them real quick. All right. So I see we have a question about protection class. Um, generally speaking, you know, if something's within the city limits, so it's generally a protection class one to six. Um, generally, I would say it's really one or one to a three. Um, I know some agents use certain services where they can, um, you know, they're writing a report on the building anyways in order to determine, you know, their replacement costs on the building. So that report also provides them with the protection class, um, things like that. Um, some of our carriers do um, put the protection class on there um, for us when we, you know, go in to quote the rest. So if you don't know the protection class, um, I mean, it's important to us, but we can move forward without it. I mean, as long as they're not in some extremely, like, high wooded area, you know, extremely far from city limits where, you know, the protection class could easily be like a nine or a 10. Um, that's when we get into, into not, I just, those are higher risk um, type locations. So really, generally speaking, your protection class is going to be between one and six. Um, if it's something that's, you know, within the city limits. And then we have another question. Okay, so our other question is um, towards a specific type of, uh, of risk for a HOA community association, um, and they're asking about um, if they had any sort of um, patrol, so like a security guard or anything like that on their premise. Um, that's not necessarily something that you would list on the Accords, um, not on the 140 or anything like that. Um, for our HOAs, we have specific supplementals. Uh, where these questions are asked, so we would be putting that information on those, not specifically on the accords. All right, and I believe that was it for our two questions. So I'm going to pop over to the accord 131. So Teresa also said we were going to give them an umbrella, um, so that's what the accord 131 is for. Um, again, you know, I filled out some basic information on here already for us as far as the agent. Let me put their name. Again, you can skip over the payment information. We're not going to worry about that. Um, so we're calling this a new, because it's new to us. It might be a renewal for you guys, but the account is new to us. So we're going to call it new. Um, I'm not too concerned about your retroactive date. 
So here is your limit of liability. This is what limit we're looking for. So we're going to say they want a $2 million umbrella. So we're going to put that in. So that's the limit. So the limit that they're looking for is important to us because it will help determine what markets we can go to. You know, some of our markets can go up to $5 million. Some of them can go up a little bit higher. It just depends on the type of risk that it is and what limit they're looking for. Um, again, we're going to put in their location information. All right, um, and then I believe Teresa put 40000 for their payroll, and we've had 200000 for the sales. I'm not concerned about foreign sales, and the number of employees I'm not concerned about here. So now we want to know what coverages you want to go over. Um, for sure, we want to go over the general liability. Um, so here is where you would list the carrier. If you're quoting it new to us and, you know, we don't know who the carrier is going to be yet, that's fine. We don't need that necessarily filled in. If you were just looking for us to do an umbrella over an existing policy for you, I'm just going to put farmers in for an example. And then we'd want to know what their, their policy dates are for their umbrella. And then... And then you're going to, you know, fill in your standard limits. And this is important to us, especially if they have two, four limits, you know, already, um, what limits they're looking to go over. These are things that we would need to know. And then, um, so let's say we want to include the auto liability. So this could either be a true commercial um, auto policy or say they have hired an unknown auto. So we're going to say... We're going to say that they have hired an unknown auto included on their current farmer's policy. So we're going to, again, fill in this information. All right. And then we're going to say they have $1 million limits right now included. All right. And then... Um, we can also go over the employer's liability, so their work comp policy, um, if they have a work comp policy. So let's just say they have one through employers, and we're going to include that as well. Again, you know, if you don't have um, this information, including it on here, especially having the, you know, the carrier and things like that. Like I said, if they are currently shopping the account and we don't know who the underlying is going to be, that's not a problem for us. Um, because what we're going to end up asking you as well, um, in addition to the Accord 131 for, to quote the umbrella, is we're also going to ask you either for a copy of the underlying quotes um, or policy that they have in place that we're going over. Um, because our carriers are going to need to see the forms list and we're going to need to know the premium. So the GL portion of it, is going to be rated on the GL premium from the underlying policy. So having that information is helpful as well. So just giving us an Accord 131 is a little difficult because we don't have enough information to quote off of. Um, so any underlying policy you're looking for us to go over, we would need a copy of that as well. But like I said, we can definitely work off any quotes, um, underlying quotes. It doesn't have to be a policy that's in effect yet. Um, and then, honestly, most of these questions I don't really care for to be answered. They don't necessarily apply because we're getting a copy of that quote or the policy, so we're already seeing all the rating factors on there. So really, I'm most concerned about the first page and what information, what policies we're looking to go over. Um, so that's pretty much it for the 140 and the 131. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over to Lexi Johnson, and she's going to go through the work comp accords for you.